Hello, you guys. Uh, this is Sandra Weckert from the BTA, the Braintree Academy, based in Berlin, Germany. I'm going to give a small lecture about spiral dynamics and uh, the shape of the iceberg, by, where I put this highly complex model of spiral dynamics into in order to reach the goal that everybody can understand this fabulous model. Um, as you can see, we are working with mind maps, and this is how this lecture is structured. We are starting with this red arm of the mind map. I will tell you something about the basis of organizational development, how we understand it. And we, I will tell you at first uh, about um, something about the, a word which is really a trigger for lots of people. This word is called hierarchy. Why is this world a trigger? Because lots of people do not know that there are two forms of hierarchy existing parallel beside each other. One form of the hierarchy is um, called pyramid because it's the shape of a pyramid. And the other one is a spherical shape or called globe. I will continue with this right away. Then in the second arm here of this red mind map arm, I will tell you something about spiral dynamics in the iceberg shape. Because we at the Brain Tree Academy uh, work with spiral dynamics and er every tool that, I will, um, that, that we are working with is based on this iceberg. We work in a progress and each of this uh, progress is um, divided into 12 sessions for one quarter of a year and based on um, the tools to, for development and basic for the first quarter, Timo for the second quarter, leader for the third quarter and master for the last quarter of organizational development. And the point where we develop an organization are always the people who are so far developed that they can understand and work with spiral dynamics. I will uh, continue with this right away. The levels of impact that we are working with is body, mind, and soul. What do I mean with this? We work with uh, music with the uh, big band method. I can tell you about this something later if you wish to. Then with the tools, the mind, so we stay with each tool until Every coach he has mastered this tool, transferred is in, into his mindset in order to be able to lead, and soul, which we call the coaching, to guide the coachee in the process of development and be with him while he lets go of the old world <laughs> and uh, says hello to the new world and becomes a very important part of the new world by being it. I will tell you something about this later. After this, um, we will make a big jump, a big step into one of the highly developed um, tools called tyranny. It's based on a drama by William Shakespeare, Richard III, and by studying the roles that the person in, that the, uh, that the people in different organizations on, or different social systems get into or playing the roles defines if you are building the infrastructure of a pyramid, pyramidal hierarchy or a global hierarchy. And this is a real changing point if you want it this way, because if you understand which roles are defined um, in a pyramidal hierarchy, and the example is Richard III, then you will understand that you are the one who is um, responsible for keeping this pyramid alive by choosing the role you're playing in. And if you understand that you don't want this pyramidal shape anymore, then you don't have to be part of this pyramidal shape and hierarchy anymore. And that's why, that's why you have to be able to choose different roles. That's how we do it when in, the, in the big band. And I'll tell you um, a little bit about how we do this at the end of the tool, tyranny. Last but not least of this um, little lecture about our tools is uh, one of the five 
um, one of the highly developed um, toolboxes, which is called the five core competencies of um, uh, charismatic leadership, which is to be able to make clear announcements, to have professional competence in leading and leading, and to be able to have empathy for yourself and the person who is um, the opposite of you, then learn to have a fairly de a highly developed toolbox ready for solving problems in every situation with customers, with uh, your colleagues, with your bosses, and to be a leader and be really able to solve the problems appearing and consider them as a challenge to grow. And last but not least, the, four, the four, fifth core competence is to be able to ask instead of telling or saying people what to do. This is the next um, tool that I will introduce um, afterwards. Then we go to come here to the, to the green. Um, we do the analysis who in the company, in the system, in the family, or in the person himself, him or herself, is, is ready to take to go on the, in this path to do this process and who not and we choose only the people who are so far developed that they are ready to really get inside themselves not to do projections who is who is um, guilty or who has to change how but look inside yourself and see that you are the one who is responsible uh, for the situation. And there are not so many people who are at this point of development already. We are only looking for people who are really already far and highly developed. I'll tell you something at, le at last of this uh, session. And then if you want to get in contact with us, or if you would like to have those tools in English or German, then please send us an email. I will close this lecture with this. So. Let's start right away. Gifted but blind is a quote by a German, a very famous, very famous, for me, he's a, a very famous musician. It's, he's called Captain Peng, and he wrote a song about the Homo sapiens sapiens. So that's the title Homo sapiens sapiens, gifted but blind. Um, it's really worth um, listening to the song if you are able to understand German and if you are uh, looking for. For, the, for a link to listen to the song, then just let me know, I'll give it to you. Gifted but blind describes us, the homo sapiens, sapiens, a species who is performing on the stage of this planet for about 200,000 years. That's our age. The homo sapiens sapiens appears on the stage of planet Earth uh, just 200 years ago, which is very young. We are a really small, small, small part, <laughs> one of the youngest part um, in history of Earth. And for 200,000 years, we copied the, a form of hierarchy by all the living creatures and all the, um, the nature which is surrounding us. We copied from looking to the stars or in, looking to the universe and uh, or looking into ourselves. How do um, organisms organize in order to be able to live together? And this is called the globe hierarchy. Um, this is the other form of hierarchy and <laughs> invented by us, by the Homo sapiens sapiens, and it's only 5,000 years old, or young, should be said young. This is much better. It's only 5,000 years young. And um, the goals of both of those organizational forms are very different. I'll tell you something about this, because as I said in the beginning, they are existing parallel beside each other, but lots of people to simply not know this fact. So, so look at this. Yeah? The basis of both of those uh, forms is very, very different from each other. And a global or a globe hierarchy, like galaxy or our solar system or your body or each cell in your body is cooperation because 
if you if, if all your organs or all your cells in your body would not cooperate with each other, then you simply would not sit here and be able to listen to me. Yeah. So your liver is not fighting against your heart because I'm, ah, I'm more down on the don't tell me that you are more worth than me. No, they are all experts. Each organ and each cell in your body is an expert for what it does. And because they do that because they know they are gifted somehow that cooperation is the basis in order to be successful and create win-win-win situations for every part of the system. And on the contrary, uh, this is exactly the difference, uh, the, the com completely, com completely different. It's based on a competition. And if you look at this, uh, maybe you have uh, seen an organigram um, or a pyramid um, in, in, in your life before, and you know that if you have been working or if you if you work in a in a company where you have a boss and he is the so-called leader and he tells you, he tells the the people just below him to do as he says, and they tell the people below them to do as they say, and they, they tell the people in the on the basement how to do it, it's it's hell. Yeah. We compete with everyone on every level. And we are about what can I do to get higher in order to have more value in my mind or on my salary or with all the other guys, <laughs> yeah? So this is very important to understand that these are two forms of hierarchy. One is based on cooperation and one is based on competition and this has consequences yeah? because both forms need a mindset in order to exist yeah? so don't take it personally it's just the mindset is created because the system structure needs this mindset in your body every organ and or every individual in former times like 100,000 years ago for instance in uh, in com com communities of, of human beings has the same value. They're all experts for what they do. And on the other hand, here in this pyramid, they're no experts, they're slaves, because the whole structure, the whole social infrastructure is based on competition. Yes, look at this. So that to, to, to cut a long story short, this is what we created. We is the species of Homo sapiens sapiens. And in the globe hierarchy, uh, there are only mindsets of experts because the basis of the whole structure is cooperation, age, I don't know. I suppose lots and lots of years more than two, 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 200,000 because the Homo sapiens sapiens is here on the stage for uh, 200,000 years, but the age of the Earth is five billion years. And I suppose that there are a lot of more uh, planets or systems or solar system or galaxies around which are even older. It seems to be a form of organization which is a universal. Instead of this thing that the Homo sapiens sapiens created 5,000 years ago, it acquires a mindset of slaves and the basis is competition. The age is only 5,000 5, years. And um, I don't know, but I have never heard about pyramids, um, pyramid shapes in, in the universe. If, if there are pyramid shapes, just let me know. I would very much interested to learn about this, how this system works. Because here on planet Earth, it does not work. Because of the choice we made 5,000 years ago, we now feel the consequences of this in economy and ecology. 15% of people have quit internally. That means they do their job, but they do it because they have to, not because they love it. 70% of executives work only their regularly because they don't, they don't they live, they're not burning inside for what they do. They don't have 
um, they don't want to, to go there. They just do it because they have to do it, because they've been told, not because they want to. And they think that the people who are working from them, they're, they're just out of order, like sort of broken. Huh? Um, of course, everyone in the whole system uh, competes with each other. And that means that you have constant fluctuation, constant recruitment, and constant qualification in order to make the thing go round and round and round. And the most um, fearful fact is that 30 to 40 percent of the diseases are mentally conditioned, mentally. 30 to 40 percent. Those numbers that you see here are out of a Gallup study in the year 2016, which means we do not know what Corona has done to these numbers, but I suppose it's not, it has, it has not getting better. So this is the consequence, or these are the consequences of a choice the species Homo sapiens sapiens made 5,000 years ago. And in order, <laughs> to be able to guide the people out of this um, pyramid hierarchy and out of this shape and out of this infrastructure, we use a spiral dynamics by Claire W. Graves in order to make them feel and understand every single level of consciousness in their minds and their bodies and their souls. The thing is, um, when I first, got in touch with uh, Spiral Dynamics 2012, I was fascinated by the model right away. And I was studying like the whole day through Ken Wilber, Ken Wilber, Ken Wilber. And I was reading and reading and talking about it to everyone. And lots of people said, Sandra, go away. We don't want to hear about this because it's too complex. I don't understand at least two words per sentence. So I don't want to hear about this go away. And I thought there must be a solution because spiral dynamics is so useful for everyone to develop if you could only get access to understand this highly complex model. And what I did is I developed this iceberg. I put all the so-called lower levels beyond the surface like the basic, the purple, um, um, the beige with basic needs, needs the purple level with uh, family and culture, the red level with fight and rebellion, the blue level with rules and order, the orange level where you want to be successful, and the green level where you understand that working around in teams is much better than fight alone for, you, for yourself in an iceberg underneath the surface of the water. And the top of the iceberg, the yellow level, which understands that uh, in order you have a conflict or there's a disagreement between um, people or between two sides, this, the person who has um, his point of gratitude on this very high developed level of consciousness, which we call in order to understand, make, make it understandable, the Nelson Mandela mindset. That is why I chose this. I chose this this name. Um, if you are like, if you are on top and conscious and have your point of gratitude on this yellow um, top of the iceberg or tip of the iceberg, then you are able to understand and feel every single level below the water surface. And you understand and can mediate and can listen and you don't have to fight anymore. So this is the goal. <laughs> and then I told you, I would like to tell you something about uh, why I call this Nelson Mandela. Um, in my studies, I found about uh, that Nelson Mandela, um, after 27 years, 27 years in prison, managed 
to be released from prison first, then to be the first elected black president in South Africa and to unite this deeply divided country. How did he do this? I suppose, or I think, he had his level of consciousness, his point of gratitude on the yellow, um, on, the, on the yellow level, on the tip of the iceberg. And there is a very fascinating movie about this, if you would like to have a look at this, called Invictus, which shows the whole iceberg and the protagonists uh, who are acting and they're using the whole iceberg in order to make the unbelievable or the thing you, you cannot reach, the unreachable, really to become a truth, to become reality. He did this. And I think um, this movie is very, very uh, good to study the Nelson Mandela mindset or the yellow level of consciousness, which is the goal of our development. And one of the most important things to know about this work or about spiral dynamics is that no person is on a level. Everyone has a point of gratitude on one or the other level. And it depends on which level you have your point of gratitude in order to judge or not judge, fine, because you have different values if you have your point of gratitude on the one or the other one. So let's start at the basis here. The one, uh, zero, but zero point one percent of adults have their point of gratitude, gratitude in conscious development on the base level. But the basic needs like existing, like sleep, like eating and drinking and have um, food like sexuality or be, um, be hugged by, by people on this level, not only babies, uh, but the adult people. Only if you are satisfied with those needs, you can make a development and will rise to the purple level. Well, to a toddler, a toddler, for, for instance, is, is a good example, where you think that um, fairy tales, stories, myths are very important for you, your family, your culture, think you, you believe, you don't know, but you leave. This is proper. Those people who have the point of gratitude there, they have different values than the next one. Red level. <laughs> Red. Like breaking through, like making things completely different, like saying no to things, yeah? like fight and rebellion and being different. Like the pioneer is, um, is a good example for this, even like Attila the Han is a good example too, okay? So people who have um, their point of gratitude at this level, they're very easy to recognize because they're simply like, well, you can see it. You will see it if they have their point of grat gratitude there. And afterwards comes the next one, the blue level, where I look at this, 40%, 40% of adult people, of the adults um, have their point of gratitude, their gratitude there. It means you have um, the rules and the orders, what is, what is right and what is wrong. Very important level in order to know, have structure, what to do and what not to do and to be able to survive uh, in, the, in the world and to organize yourself. And then next step, next level is the orange level. Being successful in whatever you do. It, it's not important what the rules are or what the orders are or what the law says. Well, you want to be successful. And if you want to be you want to be successful so hardly that you even break the rules, the rules because you're not simply not interested in how the rules are. You change the things, change is coming. Huh? And afterwards, really high level of development already, the green level, 9% of adults have their point of gratitude there. And they understand, or if, if you have your point of gratitude, gratitude there, you understand that teams 
means in German you would say not toll ein anderer machts, but together everyone achieves more. Very high developed um, level already. If you have there your uh, your point of gratitude, and after that, yeah, only one percent of adult people. One one example is Nelson Mandela have their point of grat gratitude there on the yellow level. And this is very fascinating because you're there. If you're there, you understand and can feel, you, you can feel the whole iceberg. You know, and you see where, what the needs of the people are who have their point of gratitude just in this moment on which level and why it is so important for them you can integrate instead of fighting you can integrate instead instead of putting it away and the iceberg or spiral dynamics is always there we are not on one level they are always every level is there and they have to say something to the situation if you ask them so we have developed a way of really digging very deeply emotionally and intellectually in what those levels of what the, the voices in me have to say in order to the situation um, which a coach is bringing in a situation. And that uh, grows a really deep understanding for yourself and enables you to develop yourself or develop your coachy in um, emotional and an in, in intellectual way. So that's the iceberg. If you are interested in getting this iceberg, the, the model, and then just let me know at the end of this lecture, I'll send it to you. So um, next one. Now, <laughs> tyranny. Tyranny is one of the tools which comes from our processor master. All the tools that we develop, it's like over 50, 55 at the moment, I'm, I don't know right now, away, is one of the highly, um, and, uh, highly developed tools. And it's based on a very famous drama by Richard, uh, by, by, and it's based on a very famous drama by William Shakespeare called Richard III. Richard III had, a real big problem. He was rich, he was privileged, he was used to rule and a real good actor and he wanted to become king. He wanted to become king of England, but unfortunately there were four people in the row before him. So including two little princes. So from the logic of Richard III, it's very easy. He's just said, well, I have to kill them all because if they are dead, then I will be, Okay, the next king. And he does that. So he kills all the four, um, I don't know what's in the English, all the all the four um anwärter, all the four anwärter for, for the for the throne. If you if you know the the, the word for anwärter of, of, of the throne, throne anwärter, please put it in the chat and I can learn this right now. <laughs> so um so then um, he kills everyone and becomes king. And by doing so, he creates the structure that we called the pyramidal structure or the infrastructure, which leads to this, which, which destroys everything. Very important to know that he is so good in creating the structure because he knows that if he defines the roles that the people are playing in there and putting the other people into, their, into those roles, he will succeed. And if you understand that the role a person is playing and the person is not the same, and one person can impersonate lots and lots and lots of roles, and we are all playing roles all the time, then you know that you can, that you can always have a choice. You can say, yes, I want to play the role of a victim, or I want to play the role of a fearful, or I want to play the role of a soldier, or you, or you say, nah, I don't want to play any of those roles. I want to have 
a different structure. I want to have a different world. I want to be different. I'm, I'm not saying yes to this pyramid. So with this tool, we take a close look <laughs> into the system. If you're very brave, use your family to analyze it. Mm -hmm. um, into the system of the coachee, <laughs> the family, the department, the whole company, and the people um, learn and experience which roles are incorporated by the persons, by the, by the person and uh, by the people, and they and then they feel and experience which roles they are ch they choose themselves, which is sometimes a real hard process. We won't do this be now because there's not enough time for this. If you would like to do it together with us, then um, come to one of our strategy uh, work workshops that we can do this together. But here, very close, how do we do this? We tell them, okay, imagine there's a stage and there's a tyrant, it's one role, in the case of Richard III, it's Richard III, he's playing role two, and there are different other roles which you can choose. The ones, if the victims are betrayed ones, the fearful ones, the displacers, the blindfolded, the greedy, both is very easy to, to, to discover, the soldiers and the believers. These are all roles appearing perfectly and Richard III. So you can either choose to study this drama or you can look to your own drama and analyze why this drama is a drama and which role or which roles um, are played by you and your family or you and your department or you and your company. So um, <laughs> I'm not going into all of this because I'm just going very, very shortly through. Let's have, let's have a look, um, the victims and the betrayed ones, then we study how do you can, how, how you can, um, how you can find out who was playing the roles of the victim and betrayed one, betrayed ones. Well, let's say me, Sandra Weckert, I'm a very brave person, I told you, this is Sandra, I was born in year 1973, and I tell you, till Sandra Weckert, in the year 2018, when I developed this tool, I was playing the role of a victim and a betrayed one perfectly. I was it. <laughs> I was really identifying with my role of a victim. And it will always, always be really bad person or really bad systems who try to kill me or try to betray me and all of this. The thing is, it is very hard for you to understand and to admit that you are responsible when you play this role. Um, so it was hard for me too. But it was the exit too out of this role because once I understood that it's me who is creating the whole system, I could let go and stop it. And that's the way we do it with our coaches. So we take a quick analysis of the roles that they are play of the drama if you want to and we go with to all of the seven roles by played in uh, Richard III um, by William Shakespeare and then we add two more roles which are not shown in Richard III um, but are there very widely spread in our so-called Western world uh, nowadays. One of them is the nice to have mindset, but um, unfortunately we don't have enough time in this lecture to, um, to uh, get deeper in this. But um, the thing is, if you have a nice to have mindset, then development is impossible. So at this point, <laughs> you understand, like the iceberg and spiral dynamics is always there, always, always, always. And there are very, <laughs> all, those, all those levels of consciousness in the iceberg, of course they react to this, what's happening there. Of course they have to say something to the situation if you remember it and if you feel it emotionally, what happened to you, every one of them. So it's like a kaleidoscope of um, people and opinions and roles, and you really get to know yourself really, really deeply. 
of every role you play by using spiral dynamics. And then our coaches or the people that we are talking about, our customers say, yeah, well, um, but I don't want to play this role, those roles anymore. I want to create a different world. I want to return to um, a global structure, to a global hierarchy. What can I do? I said, well, yes, you have to play different roles. And lots of people do not know that a big band or a band itself or a big band is not working with those roles from a tyranny. If, if you have a tyrant and a big band, it won't work. If you have victims, betrayed, fearful, and all those roles which are there, then the band will not be successful because you need people who impersonate different roles and not believers and not soldiers and not greedy ones. And we let them feel it in, 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 order, in order to feel it, we tell them, well, we're going to do um, a team event. So it's sort of disguise. <laughs> we tell them, you, you're not going to have um, the, the best team event ever. It's better than cooking, definitely. It's better than climbing. It's really, really beautiful and nice. And you will never forget it. Because let's make a team event with the Big Band method. Which means, if you come in here, then you see this constellation of instruments. And the people are fascinated by it because they want to play an instrument. We've been doing it for 12 years. I tell you, there's there has never been a person, not in a school, not in a company, not even in prison, who didn't want to play an instrument or to sing. Yeah? They always choose a role in this uh, company constellation called Big Band. What they do not know is that they tell us where they are good in which role in the company. But I tell you now what it is. So the company constellation. People who choose drums or percussion are always good as empowerers. They are always good in production. They love to be the heart, to act like a heart, like the heart in the company, because they will never stop to give the pump energy into the system. People who are very good in managing, they don't want to be seen. And they don't want to do um, to stand in front of the of the band and telling everybody what the what the company is is doing. No, they want to steer the whole process with really deep waves and not to be seen, but have a very powerful position. Every manager or everybody who is good in managing the department or the whole organization will take the base. Okay. People who are a little bit more extroverted, <laughs> but good managers too, they take the guitar, they choose the guitars. Uh, because of the guitar, you can do both. You can stand on the back and do the rhythm, or you can step out and play a solo. People who don't want to be seen and do the structure on the back, ITs, admins, uh, um, or Sachbearbeitung, I don't know what Sachbearbeitung in, tell me, what Sachbearbeitung? People who like to have a keyboard in front of them, Sachbearbeitung, yeah, um, accountants, yeah? they always choose the keyboard because they love to stand on the back. With those four instrumental groups, the keyboards, the drums, the basses, and the guitars, you know exactly who is good in what we call betrieb. Yeah? And the thing is, if you're acting in the band and you have to leave your comfort zone, you have to leave the comfort zone, be, I cannot play or I'm not music, I, I, I cannot do music, I cannot sing, I cannot do whatever. You leave it and you have really a big advantage of cooperation. The more you cooperate, the more successful you are personally, the group and the whole organization. What, what is missing? Uh, you need people for the marketing. 
all the guys who are creative and loud and <laughs> want to attract the attention, they always choose the saxophone or the trumpets or the trombones. And they are really good in all kinds of marketing in order to uh, trace att attraction. And last but not least, the singers here, well, you guess. Mick Jagger is one of the best salesperson I ever, um, <laughs> I have, I've ever seen, that's why I'm such a big fan of them, I suppose, sales. People who are good in sales, they will always grab the microphone because they cannot, simply cannot wait to tell the audience or the customers, mm -hmm, which is the next role, how marvelous, how good this whole company, the whole band is. And as you can see it, the one thing is missing, the person in the middle, which is the CEO or the conductor, has no instrument, but lots of power and responsibility. And if he chooses the people very wise by asking them, what would you like to do in this company? What would you like to do in this big band? Well, then you have to just ask, what do you need to perform better in the group? How can I help you to be, uh, to feel better, to be one part of the whole thing and feel very well. And as you can see it now here, this is not just a team event, but it's an um, exhibition and on the tunes of Jello of the global, of the globe system with the leading personality, the charismatic leader in the middle of the band. There are no roles like Reedy's or like victims or betrayed ones, you simply don't have time because you love to cooperate because that's what we do as human beings, as a homo sapiens sapiens. So, and now you know where the people are good in, which role they would love to play. And the rest you have to find out is very easy. You have to make sure that the people who are the leading persons or the, 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 the executives in, in the company have the core five core they have lots of tools and the five core competences of a leader. And those five core competences of a leader are the following. You have to be able to ask instead of tell in order to sell. You have to be able to make clear announcements in order to steer the whole process. You have to be able to, ha you have to have professional competencies and because you have to know something about the field of business where you are in. And you have the fourth core competences, empathy. You have to be able to have empathy for yourself and for the others, both both directions and of course for leading you have to have a toolbox very well structured and very well trained with lots of coaching and exercising and mediation and reflection in order to develop more and more and more and more and this is a process which will never stop lots of tools in order to lead and what we do then we nearly made it I'm coming to the conclusion right now is, uh, hold on, so I'll put this away. So we asked our coaches or our customers, well, tell us, what are your competencies? Or do you know those tools? Do you know the red line, which is a tool for being able to make clear announcements? Do you know how to guide focus on motivation. Do you know the very nice tool, the four phases of power? Do you know the systemic consensus? Do you know the five sentences tool? Do you know the work by Byron Katie? Do you know a gym and scales by Sandra Beckert? Or do you know guiding neurotic people how to do this? And um, if not, which of those tools are you most interested in? Oh, and what do you think is um, behind gym and scales? What is um, the advantage do you have 
if you know how to deal with this tool. And we do it with all those uh, tools that we developed in all of the five core competency fields of a leader. And then you know which of the tools are interesting for you and which not, because you know them already. And so we have a very clear plan of how to structure the development process in the chosen role in the new or oh, old um, global hierarchy. So first is first step is we tell the people about spiral dynamics and the two uh, and, the, and, and the two forms of hierarchy existing. One, which is the solar system or the global system, and one, which is the pyramid. Then we analyze a tyranny tool which I developed uh, in 2018, which roles are played in the system right now. And last step, show them after letting them perform in the global hierarchy and the big band disguised as team event, which tools they need for development. So we choose toolbox the company or the person needs for development. And after this, like half a year, nine months or one year, the Braintree Academy is out because we, has, we have transferred all of our knowledge to our coaches, to our customers. How do we do this? We put all those um, tools in a database consisting of 400 tutorials recorded where every tool is explained, where every tool is uh, written in a book so that the knowledge transfer can not cannot um, cannot fail it's impossible you, you cannot fail if you work for six months or nine months or a year with those toolbox so that's how we do it in three steps and now i'm free for question and answers but uh, before this because i'm knowing i'm not going to record the question and answer sessions uh, i'll tell you if you are interested in one of those tools the iceberg the hierarchy Tyranny, the core competence fields um, of, of the leader. If you want them, then please email to a meta. Um, I try to uh, make one to draw wonderful red hair because she has wonderful red hair. Uh, send an email to meta at braintree-academy.com and just let us know if you want to have them in English or in German. Now, I am prepared for your questions and answers.